Okay, so here we go. Oh, sorry. What happened there? Okay. Can you girls see this? Okay. All right. So let's look at current electricity. Okay. So uh, last time we talked about static electricity. Today we're going to talk about current electricity. All right. So current electricity is when you have a constant flow of charged particles. Remember last time we talked about when the charges are stuck on a surface? That's static electricity. And then they'll move when you have like an electrical spark that generated. But uh, constant flow of electricity, current electricity is when they're always, always, always moving. Okay. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at today. All right. To make this work, you need uh, three. Three things. Um, so you're going to see that it's really like what's called a closed path. You'll see what I mean by that. And to have a closed path where the electricity is flowing, you need three things. You need a power source. You need something that uses electricity. And you need wires. Okay? These are the three things that you're going to need. Uh, these are some symbols you might come across. So you can see here we have... Uh, the wire, so you'll need the wire, you'll need a battery, okay? And you'll need something that uses the electricity, like for example, a light bulb. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. So here is one of the things that you have to make. It's um, uh, the, the really long one where you have to make a circuit, okay? So here's your battery. Okay, now you could, there's a way to switch the symbols here, which I totally forgot how to do now. I uh, can't remember how to do that. There is a way to switch to the symbols. Where's that? Anyways, okay, so here's your battery. Here's a wire. Okay. Uh, let's say here's a light bulb. Now, to make this a uh, closed loop, what that means is the electricity is going to go back to the battery. Okay? That's what that means. So electricity is going to go back to my battery. Like that. Okay? That's a closed loop. And you can see in this circuit, the electrons are moving all the way around and back, right? That's current flow. This is current electricity. And you can see we have our three things that we need. But this is what's called a closed loop. Now, this is the reason why it's called a closed loop is if we break it. Let's see. How do we break this now? I'm going to use the scissors. Okay. So let's say... For example, most now it's the circuit's broken. So I can actually add what's called a switch. Okay. So right now you'll notice that the circuit is open. So it's not closed at this point. And you notice nothing's happening, right? There's no electrons flowing. Because for electrons to flow, the circuit has to be closed. Okay. And you can see now we have a closed loop. And the electrons are flowing. And as they're flowing through the wires, they're going through this light bulb, and they're making light. Okay? This is current flow. So it looks a little bit different than what we talked about last time, okay? But it's still the, you know, it's still the flow of electrons, right? It's still electricity. So here's, a, here's an example of a setup. Now, you'll be asked to do different setups in this simulation, um, make simple circuits, but then you'll be asked to you know, add some stuff to the circuit. So here, for example, I can see wires. I can see my battery. I can see my light bulb. I can also see a switch. 
and something called an ammeter, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, okay? So we talked about already um, a little bit about electricity. So I wanna mention some terminology that's actually pretty important when, to when it comes to uh, electricity, okay? Terminology that you see very often when we talk about electricity. The three big ones are current, the current's one. Then there's something called voltage. And then the other one is uh, down here called resistance. So I'm going to explain each one, okay? All right. So the first one is current. This is the symbol. The symbol is I. And okay, so the symbol for current is I. Let's see it right there. Uh, that's the symbol. The unit is A, which stands for ampere. Okay. So the symbol is I, the unit is A. It's like uh, density. What's the symbol for density? D is the symbol for density, but the unit is like, for example, grams per centimeter cubed, right? Uh, what's the symbol for length? That would be L. What's the unit? Maybe meters. For example, okay. So, what is current? All right. So, it says think of current as, uh, it says like, think about it as water. All right. This is basically the amount of charges that are moving through your circuit. Okay. So, as we have this circuit connected, we know that electrons are moving through the circuit, right? And you saw in the sim, what happens is, you know, they start, so imagine this is your battery. You can see they're going in one end of the battery and they're coming out the other end of the battery, right? And they're going all the way in a loop. So, so think of it like, uh, like a river, the current of a river. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's think of it like a pail. Imagine I have a pail, okay, and in the pail, there is water. Okay. Now, imagine now I have a little hole in the pail, little hole, and what happens is the water starts to come out of the pail, right? So think about the amount of water over the time. That's like your current. How much water comes out of the pail over how much time? That's your current, okay? We can imagine then a pail, sorry, like this with water in it, okay? But imagine the hole is bigger. So in that case, more, sorry, let me change the color. Uh, you can imagine in that case, more water is coming out, right? So that would represent a bigger current, okay? So just these, these analogies really help us to understand what this means, all right? So that's, that's what's meant by current. It's the amount of charge that's moving through our circuit. Okay, so think of it like a, the, you know, a like good, good visual in your head is the amount of water moving through a river, okay? The voltage is another term that we often see, probably the most common one. And uh, like, for example, if I pick up a, a, like a AA battery, it says it's 1.5 volts. Uh, you know, some other batteries might have 6 volts. Some will say 12. So what is, what is voltage? What does it mean? Okay. So here it's saying that voltage is also called the potential difference i'll explain that in a second the symbol and the unit are both v's so the symbol for voltage is v the unit is v because v stands for the volt so the analogy for voltage is often given with some sort of like a waterfall so let me explain that so current is the amount 
right? So we talked about the current as the amount of water coming out of the bucket. The voltage is the energy of the water. So let me let me show you what I mean by that. So let's imagine I have again. Let me re just redraw this, okay? So I'm going to give you the the scenarios. So here's my bucket with a tiny little hole that's got water in it. So this would represent uh, low current because just a little bit of water is coming out. Okay. Now imagine this is the ground. Okay. And the pail is off the ground. Now, why is water coming out of the pail? Well, because we know gravity makes things fall down, right? So the pail is a little bit off the ground. So the water pours out of the pail and gravity pulls it down. And it hits the ground with a certain amount of speed or energy. Okay. Now, in the example I talked about before, if I make the hole, ah, sorry, I make the hole bigger, and here's the water, then we know. more water comes out. So this would represent a higher current. But if my pail is the same height from the ground, the energy that the water hits the ground with would be the same between these two pails, okay? Because they're the same height. So they would fall at the same rate. The difference is, there's obviously more water coming out of this pail, so this would have a higher current, okay? So let me now contrast that with higher voltage. So think of higher voltage as the pail is higher. So what happens now is imagine the, the bucket with the small hole. So the water's coming out. Not, as lot, not a lot of water's coming out. So it still has low current because the hole is small, but because the water falls over a bigger distance, it hits the ground with more energy. You know that when something falls farther, it picks up more speed. It hits the ground with more energy, right? So the voltage is a measurement of the energy. It would be like the water falling from a higher height. That's what voltage refers to. If I take the other pail that has the big hole in it, I forgot to add my water, okay. So now this would represent a high current or higher current, because this is more water coming out. But it's also, you know, compared to this one, it's the water is falling from a much higher height, right? So it would hit the ground with more energy also. So this will represent a uh, high current and high voltage. This will represent low current and high voltage. Okay? So current then is the amount of water is coming out or the amount of charge because we're actually talking about charge. So it's the amount of electrons whereas the voltage is the energy of the electrons moving through uh, my circuit, okay? So this is like really important terminology for you to understand because eventually we'll be doing some, some calculations. Okay, uh, just some, some more terminology. So we said that, think of the voltage as the energy. So here the word is push, but think of it as energy. Uh, the electrons actually come out of a particular end of the battery. So if I look at this animation, you'll notice that they're actually coming out of this side and they're going into this side. They're coming out here and they're going in there. So the part where they come out is called the cathode. All right, that is actually also known as the uh, negative end of the battery. 
that's the negative end of the battery. And then they go into the anode, which is the, the positive end of the battery. Okay. That's what's actually happening in this animation. You can see they're coming out of one end and they're going out of the other end, right? So they're coming out of the negative end and they're going into the positive end. So there's actually a direction to this, okay? Okay. Um, we can measure voltage and current. We actually have two instruments that could do this. One's called the voltmeter. So the voltmeter actually measures the energy. So this is actually one of the things that you'll be doing is in the animation is hooking one up, hooking up the voltmeter to the circuit to measure the voltage, because that's what a voltmeter does. It measures uh, voltage. Now, you'll notice something interesting about the way it's connected. So if I compare, for example, the voltmeter, you'll notice that, so here is the negative end, right? There's the positive end. So the electricity would flow out of the negative end. And you could see it would go, it has actually two paths it could take. One is it can go through the light bulb, which makes the light bulb glow. And then back, assuming the circuit is closed, back to the positive end, right? There's one closed loop. That's if we close the switch, right? And right now the switch is open. The other path it could take, if we follow this, is it can go through the voltmeter. So it would go into the voltmeter and then come out of the voltmeter and then eventually go back to the battery. So you'll notice that there's actually two paths here. This is actually called a parallel circuit. So in a parallel circuit, there's more than one way the electricity could flow. So here's that negative end with the cathode. You can see it comes out and you can see it can actually go this way or it can go this way. Now, if it goes this way, it'll go through the light bulb. And then eventually, assuming the switch is closed, go back to the positive end. Or it can go the, this way, do my voltmeter, and die. And this is what's called a parallel uh, circuit. So one of the things you'll be playing around with when you play with that sim is you're going to be making some parallel circuits. So now you kind of know what is meant by a parallel circuit. Whereas if I go back to uh, current and I go back to this image, you'll notice that actually the hookup is different. This is what's called a series circuit. In this case, the electricity can only flow one way. So for example, you'll notice that here's the negative end. So the electricity is coming out of the negative end and it's going through my light bulb and then it goes into my ammeter. So my ammeter uh, measures current, whereas the voltmeter measures voltage. And you'll notice that the, the voltage, the electrons will come out of the light bulb into my ammeter, go through my ammeter, and then they'll go back, assuming the switch is closed, back to the battery. You'll notice in that case, there's only one path for the electrons, right? There's only one path. Whereas in the parallel circuit, there's more than one direction. The electrons can travel. In a series, there's only one path, okay? There's a, different hookup. So when you put together, because one of the things you're going to have to do in this simulation is you're going to be asked to connect a voltmeter and an ammeter. All right. This is really, really important. So, uh, oh, and by the way, oh, here's a little button for symbols because you have to know your symbols. So like, for example, there's a symbol for battery. There's a symbol for light bulb. 
There's a symbol for uh, switch. There's other symbols here you can play around with. But one of the things you'll have to do is connect the voltmeter and ammeter to the circuit. And as you saw, the, they're not connected the same way, okay? So the voltmeter and ammeter are not connected the same way. So just keep that in mind when you're playing around with the, uh, the simulation. Okay, any questions at this point? Nothing? Okay, so then uh, the last, so the three are current, voltage, and the last one is resistance. Now this, think of this as things that would slow down. I use the analogy of water. Think of resistance as things that would slow down the flow of water, right? So imagine like a river. The current we know is the amount of water going through the river. The voltage is how... Sorry, sir. Yes? I have a question. Okay, yeah, what's the question? Um, for the animation, can you please show us how can we use the um, voltmeter? Oh, you want me to do that for you? You're supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to use it. How to connect a voltmeter? Yes. Okay, how, how will we do this? Have you tried, have you played with this yet? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, you did? Yes, but like, I'm not sure uh, I did right or not. Okay, did you get a voltage? Um, yes, kinds of. Okay, so look, okay, let's do, let's do one together because I like you guys so much. All right, let's do this. Let's go back to this. Okay, so let's, let's connect our voltmeter. So here's our voltmeter. We know the voltmeter has to be connected in, uh, parallel, right? So that means that the electricity is going to flow, as we said, in more than one pathway. Okay, so let's take a look. So if I see how the, right now electricity is flowing out of my battery, it's going into these wires, right? It's coming into the light bulb, and then it's going through my light bulb back to battery. You see that, right? So now if I connect this probe here, like this, and then I connect this probe here, you'll notice now that's actually a parallel hookup. Now, why is it a parallel hookup? Okay, let me do this, okay? Let me do a print screen, and I'll put this in paint, so you can see why it's a parallel hookup. Okay, so you, you see the uh, screen here? I just took a picture yeah. of it. Okay. So let me just zoom out a little bit. That's yeah, a little bit too much. Uh, okay. You know what? Let me zoom in again. Okay. So look, what do we see here? So here is the flow of electricity, right? So I'm going to use, um, use black. Okay. So here's my negative end, right? The electricity is coming out of the negative end. It's going, you can see it's going like this, right? Now, yeah. It's gonna go through my light bulb and then back to the battery, right? So this is the negative end, and this is the positive end, and there's that one loop, right? There's that closed circuit. But now if I look, the electricity can also flow in through my voltmeter and around the battery, uh, the light bulb. You see that? I'm using a different color actually, so you can see a little bit better. Let me make that thicker. So look. Now you can see that the electricity will also go through my voltmeter and around the light bulb. So now I have two, two directions for my electrons. I can see there's the black pathway, which is the battery to uh, wires to the light bulb back to the battery. That's one pathway. And you can see another pathway, which is uh the red pathway which is around the light bulb okay now watch what happens if i remove this okay and i connect the ammeter oh the ammeter oh that's funny Oh, the, the ammeter doesn't have any arms. It used to have arms. Now, what happened? Did they change the simulation? Huh. 
Okay, so you know what? You don't have to worry about the ammeter. You can just put it anywhere, I guess. But the ammeter is actually supposed to be connected differently. It's supposed to be connected like this, but that's weird. Okay, so obviously you don't have to worry about the ammeter. It's just the voltmeter that you have to worry about connecting it. The, the ammeter you can just put as long as you're making contact. So you can see the current in this case is about 0.9 amps. So it's only the voltmeter that you have to worry about how to connect it. I think the ammeter is okay. Just connect it any which way as long as you get a reading. Does that help? Yes, thank you. No problem. Okay. So the so resistance then is if I say like think of it as um, think of the analogies of water. So the current is the amount of water. Okay, so current would be the amount of water. The voltage is the strength of the water, it's the energy of the water. The resistance would be anything that slows it down, right? So, you know, think of like, for example, if, uh, if it was like a tree, you know, a tree that was knocked over, um, you know, imagine a tree knocked over, what would it do? Well, it could maybe reduce the amount of water that would flow through my river, right? Like beavers do this, they reduce the amount of water by building dams. So resistance would be anything that slows down uh, current flow. So there's actually a mathematical equation for resistance that's actually called uh, Ohm's law, which is actually quite simple. It's actually the connection between those three things, resistance, uh, voltage, and current. And do you remember when we did density, we talked about the triangle for density. We said density uh, is mass over volume, right? Uh, and then we said that, well, mass is then density times volume, and volume is mass over density. We could do the same thing with, uh, with Ohm's law. So the relationship between these three things, resistance, voltage, and current, looks like this. Okay, so what this says is that resistance is voltage over current. Uh, current is voltage over resistance. And voltage then would be resistance times current. So for example, if I wanted to know the resistance, because you'll be doing some, some calculations with your, with your simulation, but I also have some calculations for you just to look at in your CPT. So we'll do some today, but we'll do some more in detail later on, maybe Wednesday and possibly Monday, okay? Um, and they're really easy. So for example, if I want to know the resistance in a circuit where the voltage is 12 volts and the current is two amps, R is V over I. So that would be 12 volts over 2 amps. So my resistance would be 6. Now, 6 what? Okay, well, the symbol for resistance is R. Okay, so the symbol is R right here. The unit, you have two choices. You can write this out or you can draw this funny symbol. Okay, so the unit is called an ohm. It's after na named after the scientist, I'm assuming, who figured this out. Um, so you can write ohm, or you can draw that funny symbol. So you can write, let me make it bigger, let me see it. So you can write ohms, or you can draw that symbol. Okay, so in this case, my resistance is 12 volts over 2 amps, which is 6 ohms. Okay? And that's what you're seeing here. Okay? Um, things that would affect resistance would be things like the length of the wire, the area of the wire, the temperature of the wire, the type of material. So for example, we know conductors 
like metals are used for wires because they have low resistance. Um, and if they have low resistance, that means electricity can flow through more easily. It'd be like a river without a dead tree in the middle of it. Um, the area, you can see that area affects resistance. So the idea is think of the area of a wire. So imagine that, imagine this is my wire. Is my wire. But if I cut it, do a cross-sectional cut like this, my wire I know looks like a circle, right? And if you're looking at your pencil, you know that it's basically a cylinder. Well, if my wire is narrower, then there's going to be less space for the electrons to move through it. If you think about water, you know, the bigger the pipe, the more water flows through it, right? So the area of the wire is going to affect the resistance. If my area is bigger, then my resistance goes down. If my area of the wire is smaller, then it's going to be harder for the electrons to move through, just like it would be harder for water to move through. So my resistance would be increased. Okay, and we talked about current already. So here's another example of, of Ohm's law. So what would the current be if you have an 18 volt power source and a 36 ohm resistor? So we're looking for uh, current in this case. So I, so if I remember the magic triangle, so voltage, current, Resistance. So as long as you remember voltage is on top, the other two are on the bottom. So uh, current would be V over R. So that would be 18 volts over 36 ohms. So that would give you 0 0.8. Now remember what's the unit for current? The unit for current is A, which stands for amps. Okay, and you can see that I think that's here. All right, uh, we talked about the ammeter, so there's the ammeter. But I guess in your simulation, you don't have to worry about hooking it up because it seems like it's a pretty straightforward uh, hookup to the ammeter. Um, in terms of current flow, I think maybe this is a good place to stop, and then let me uh, take any questions. So hold on, let me go back. Okay, stop.